Center for Women and Families, and I have no conflicts of interest. My doctorate's in clinical psychology, my postdoc is in psychiatric epidemiology from the <coughs> medical school, and I have experience working with uh, patients with bipolar and schizophrenia. I was on the faculty at Yale and Vassar, did research at Harvard, and worked in the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Public Health Service. Our center is dedicated to improving the health and safety of adults and children, and we do that by scrutinizing medical research. I'm also a fellow at the Center for Bioethics at the University of Pennsylvania. The new FDA commissioner has said she will refocus the FDA on its public health mission, and this is the great place to start, and that's your task today and tomorrow. The key question is, do the benefits outweigh the risks for children taking the three drugs under consideration today? And that question must be answered in the context of the risks and benefits of other drugs that are already available. Since all three drugs are available, and in fact about a million prescriptions written for children ages 13 through 17 per year for these drugs, you also need to consider whether uh, FDA approval would send an inappropriate message of safety that is not supported by the research. There's a lot of pressure in this room to approve these products, but that should not influence you. Your task is to in independently scrutinize the data, to consider the impact of approval, and is to decide whether any of these three drugs are proven safe and proven effective for long-term use by adolescents compared to other available products. And remember that in exchange for doing these studies, the companies have received patent extensions worth many millions of dollars, so they've already benefited from doing this research. You don't have to feel sorry for them or worry about hurting their feelings. But you do need to determine if they've done right by our children and our psychiatrists by proving that their drugs are safe and effective for long-term use for these long-term disorders. Unfortunately, the studies are inadequate. The samples are too small, the double-blind studies are too short, and even the open-label studies are too short, and they provide really no useful information about the long-term risks of tardive dyskinesia, sudden death, or diabetes. But there's a growing research literature, as well as these studies themselves, that show how high these risks may be. And even the studies that have been presented today show significant risk of weight gain, sedation, and other serious side effects. And that sedation could be showing improvement on a mania scale because the kids are sedated rather than uh, truly less <coughs> manic. So the known risks are too great to approve any of these three drugs for bipolar disorder because there are other drugs that are safer, less expensive, and, uh, and equally or more effective. And there are uh, some antipsychotics already available. Now some kids may need some of these drugs, but they will already be available off-label as they are now. So they should not be approved, not even as a second-line drug. Because if they are, they will be advertised and used much more widely as first-line drugs. Do the benefits outweigh the risk for schizophrenia? It's impossible to say because the data, again, too short, too few student, uh, too few kids, and uh, not long-term enough to really tell us anything. And if there's any time left, I would love to answer any questions about the Russian placebo group, which I've looked at carefully and is very suspicious. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.